Look at this. Boiled eggs mm. in the morning. Time to make soldiers again. <laughs> Perfect. It's a bit windy today and the wind's gonna shift around to the north, so we just need to wait for one of these boats over here to leave. It'll be way more sheltered there and I can put a spring on the rock over there, which will make it a lot easier to um, stay here, I think. But uh, I'll show you that a little later on. Right now, breakfast. breakfast time. Breakfast time and sort of observating on the guy that we wanna <laughs> We're just stalking that guy. Yeah. He's put his wheel on. Is he grabbing the ropes? Maybe a bit too early to have anchor bubbles at like what is 11 o'clock or something. No, 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 it's past 11. Oh, it's past 11. Well, then we're okay. It's perfectly fine. The sun has passed the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> then we can get anchor bubbles out. <laughs> well, we have officially taken the anchor up and put it down again. So. Yeah. And anchored a new place. Yeah. So you can see guys. You, you guys made the rules. Yeah. That was the boat that just, uh, one of the boats that just left us there because we were just around the, uh, around the rock there. And now the wind's starting to come from a northerly direction. There's white horses out on the water, which means it's at least horses? probably a force three, force four out there. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> just about to go for a walk around the island and uh, actually I've been bailing water out of the bottom of this boat because there's a there's a slight fresh water leak somewhere so it it's really hard to narrow down where it's coming from i've checked all the fittings and everything but can't seem to find it so i've got about three bucketfuls of water out of the bottom of the boat so far so Svenska Hergener's Nature Reserve is Sweden's largest marine nature reserve since 1976. Around the archipelago there is a rich marine wildlife and on the seabed healthy ecosystems with mussels, seaweed and algae belts. The area is also one of the country's foremost migratory bird sanctuaries. In the immediate area there is also the Baltic's largest population of grey seals. Unfortunately, we didn't see any, but there was plenty more to look at. Got my little friend here. Yes, you've got a blind passenger. Mm -hmm. Svenska Hergener is probably the most easterly point that you can get to in the Stockholm archipelago. It's right the way out there from the uh, outer rim of the inner archipelago. It's probably about 20, 25 miles out. It's a nice place to come to, but you're really exposed when you, you come out here. You've really got to watch the weather. Um, we're lucky that the weather is coming from a westerly or switch into a northerly and then back to a westerly again. Otherwise, we would have to leave here and uh, find shelter elsewhere. Uh, this lighthouse behind me is the only one of its kind in in the Stockholm archipelago at least. There was an architect that built it. Look at the blueberries. Mm. Oh, and they're so good. Yeah? Yeah. Well, they're very flavorful. Yeah. That is so good. Are you sure it's blueberries? <laughs> <laughs> lighthouse masters started, started in 1874. Yeah? when the lighthouse was turned on for the first time. 1st of November, 1874, six minutes past four in the afternoon. <laughs> it's a school class from 1896. Walking up this lighthouse is like Walking in a ship, you know, everything's metal everywhere. It smells like a ship as well. The metal in the paint. Hello. Hello. I'm wondering why I'm doing this when I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> <laughs> Nickel cadmium batteries. Bloody windy up here today. A nice view of the island though. It's pretty cool. Probably found the only spot on the island that's not blowing like a 
Yeah. Mother Hubbard. <laughs> so this is but a I nesting guess. ground for a lot of birds, I think. But I guess there would be with all the bird babies A lot of eggshells everywhere. Check this out, guys. It's a little like boat building facility or something like that, or just a boat maintenance place, but look at this one. I guess they're just working on it here and there. Getting a ship shape ready to go. As you can see behind me, uh, we're just on the edge of the harbour here. We were a bit further out last night, but we moved a little bit further in today and uh, we've got a good place on the other side to actually run a spring onto the boat. Um, but if the wind shifts any further this way, uh, later tonight it's going to be a little bit uncomfortable. So I really hope it just stays in the same direction. Um, it can blow really hard, at, we don't care, but because uh, we that spring is going to hold the boat uh, towards the rocks there. On the other hand, if it shifts to a southerly direction, that won't be very good because it will push us on the rocks. If you want to put a bowsprit or a peak on a 388 or a 418, um, they're provided by Bolt System. I think we have the PB140 and I think, by the looks of it, this is the PB120, which is slightly too small to fit the 16 kilo uh, Lumar anchor on there. We need to lower the anchor there so we can actually get the ladder to fit out of it and uh, go straight down so that we can actually use the ladder without the anchor binding it. Hey little one. Little duckling has lost his family. Actually we need to try and help take him back to his family. But um, like Sarah said, if we yeah. if we handle him, he's gonna smell like human, so we ideally don't wanna do that. Come on. Come on. Oh my god, he's so cute. Can't touch him, but I so wanna cuddle him. Yeah. We need to take him over. Take him to his family. I just wanna see that he continues with the others. We tried to introduce that little birdie, little duckling thing to its family, but uh, yeah, it just kept swimming off on its own, so uh, I don't know. He, he knows how to feed himself anyway, he's diving under and feeding, so I don't think that it's an unusual thing that they're on their own actually looking at the others now, so. But I mean. they seem to have gotten the, the right point, those ones, because yeah. they're all swimming in the right direction. Yeah. He's just swimming towards boats. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't know what to follow and when he was in the bucket he didn't want to leave the bucket either, so it's a bit strange. Oh well, wildlife in Sweden. Alright guys, me and Nikolai just, just put this cover up, this canopy around the back of the boat here. <laughs> I would have done time lapse if I knew it was going to be such a mission to be honest. It's taken us like 30-40 minutes, but I think that was because we didn't know how the bars fitted together up here. And you can see the difference between this canopy and our one is that the uh, the bars fit down in the winch handles and you have to fit it all together. So you have to store this whole unit uh, down in the lazarette down there and then construct it and try and line it up and get it in and then get the cover over the top and zip it in and everything like that. I much prefer our design where it just sits over there and it's it's all covered up and everything and you just uh, take the cover off spread it out um, and then you put the sides in it's so much easier that way and i'm glad we, we uh, didn't go for this solution uh, to be honest it's a bit more of a hassle but yeah it's working really well it's like uh, i just said to nikolai it's like night and day in here now in you know sitting here in the wind to the side isn't isn't much fun when it's blowing on you Wind's getting up and it's coming around the corner now, slowly. I'm hoping it's not going to come too far, like I said before, but to help uh, the situation, I've just put another spring now from this rock uh, going to the middle of the boat so that it uh, helps keep the boat back as well. Otherwise, the whole strain is on the uh, back anchor there. Got a beer now. Two beers, in fact. Gonna go and find Nikolai, have a beer with him, do some fishing. 
see what we can catch. My whole life working toward Miley Cyrus, Ooh. only to have it ruined by mouth herpes. Sometimes the forecast can be wrong. Right now it should have been blowing like 12 meters a second from a northerly direction. Now it must be blowing maybe two meters a second from a northerly direction, but it's still better to prepare for the worst and hope for the best. I hope it just stays like this for tomorrow. Nice calm winds, nice sail back. Really special place to come out to visit. That's for sure. Only two boats in here tonight, in the main harbour anyway. There's a few, uh, there's a few smaller yachts uh, further down that you can see, but I think you can only get down there if you're like two meters or less. Let's go to bed. Yeah, it's a little challenging to get out today, but as long as we plan it okay, it'll be all right. Now. You've got to do this in a slightly smart way to avoid putting too much pressure on the rear anchor and to get these springs off so that it, it doesn't, uh, doesn't start drifting away. So the first thing I'm going to do actually is tie a rope from the bow to that hook there to hold the boat back slightly and then it's going to go to the hook and then back to the boat. So I'm going to get that line on first and then I'm going to take these two springs off one by one and the, the weight of the boat will be on the uh, anchor for a short time, but it should be okay. Obstacles that we have to avoid today is there's a very shallow part outside there so I'm going to have to, <clears throat> I'm going to, have to reverse very hard and get that anchor up very fast and reverse out that way to get out of this harbour in a, a northerly direction that way. Tricky times, the wind's blowing uh, 20 to 25 knots on the broadside. Before we got going we did a crew briefing and discussed all the worst possible things that could happen and what to do in those situations. As you know a sailboat needs water going past the rudder in order to maneuver and the worst thing that could happen here is if the boat gets stuck ashore with one of the lines trapped in the cleats or if one of the lines goes around the prop. The problem then would be that I'd be unable to maneuver the boat and we'd be completely at the wind's mercy. Yeah, I can bring it forward a little bit. So the first stage of the plan was to remove that spring line and hopefully the anchor would take up the load. Yeah, but I can't release this at all. There's too much tension on it. Second. Is it this one? Oh, there we go. Just give her a bit of flat. As soon as I released that spring stern line, the stern started to shift around and I was hoping that the anchor was going to take up the load, but it didn't. I don't know whether it ripped out the mud or it was just at an angle that it just wouldn't have worked. So as time slows down and panic sets in, with the boat next to me and the rocks behind me, I realized I had to do something fast. Cut the rope! Cut the rope! 
Decision made. Full reverse, cut the lines to avoid any finger injuries on the cleats and to avoid any snagging also. Next step, start winding in the anchor line before it goes around the prop. In hindsight, we should have eased that spring until we saw whether the anchor could hold the load or not. And also, maybe we could have saved the rope if it could have been slipped, but it's better to sacrifice a 30 euro rope than to lose the boat. As you can probably hear, the anchor winch got stuck again, so I called Nikolai to come back and shake the bag so that we could get all the line in from the anchor. At this point I wasn't too concerned, we were out of the danger. With all that drama we'd left Tanya ashore. It was an option to take the boat towards the rocks and try and board that way, but the rocks were simply too slippery and it presents a risk for the boat also. Another option was to blow up the dinghy or throw in the sup board, but luckily someone close by had a dinghy and they could drop Tanya aboard. Thanks Amika! Okay, so that wasn't the smoothest departure from uh, Svenska Hergene there. We're uh, out in the open sea now. Wind's blowing about 22 knots. Got two reefs in the mainsail. And we're doing around seven and a half knots. I was gonna try and head uh, straight more towards Stockholm out there but we'll head south because it's going to be a smoother sail as well on sort of a beam reach with these kind of waves doesn't look like much but there is some roll to them and uh, to head towards Stockholm directly in that that direction there's a lot of rocks to avoid and I'd just rather take a smooth sail around the outside go south and then tack back up if we if we want to. We're not sure where we're going to end up tonight yet. But yeah, she's sailing beautiful. Beautifully. Just goes to show how important it is to have a knife ready when you're in these tricky situations. If you need to cut the lines, then the lines are far cheaper than a broken boat. So yeah. Quite enjoying this sail now after a bit of drama this morning. <laughs>